Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about one type of the active galaxies called the Seaford galaxies. And what's so special about Seaford? Well, they're kind of a, a lower intensity type of the active galaxies. If you compare them on the intensity scale, notice the farther you go to the right, the higher the intensity. Then here you'd have the normal galaxies, there you have the very energetic active galaxies, and the Seaford galaxies fall somewhere in between. Notice we have a couple of pictures up here of some Seaford galaxies and notice that the center of the galaxy tends to be unusually bright. A lot of the energy comes from the center of the galaxy. And why is that? Well, let's take a look over here. The visible brightness of a Seaford galaxy is roughly the same as the visible brightness of a normal galaxy. So visually, for the rest of the galaxy, you don't see a lot of difference. Secondly, the appearance of a Seaford galaxy is very much like the appearance of a normal spiral galaxy. So again, from that perspective, they don't look any different. But most of the energy of the Seaford galaxy comes from the center. The center puts out an enormous amount of energy, and when we look closely, we find that the size of that comes from a region the size of the region where the high intensity comes from is about one light year across. So it's a very small region at the center of this galaxy, and again associated with a supermassive black hole. Notice that we estimate that about 2% of all spiral galaxies fall in the category of being one of those Seaford galaxies. Now, the energy we get out of the nucleus of a Seaford galaxy is about 10,000 times the energy we get out of the nucleus of the Milky Way galaxy, so there's absolutely no comparison between the two. Massive amount of energy coming from the Seaford galaxy at the very center of the galaxy compared to a normal galaxy like the Milky Way, which is virtually zero in comparison. The nucleus of a Seaford galaxy puts out about 10 times as much energy as the entire Milky Way galaxy combined. So we're not talking about a small amount of energy coming from that center. That center of that galaxy, about one light year across, puts out as much as 10 Milky Way galaxies in their entirety. So it's a huge amount of energy that we get from that small little region at the very center. What's interesting is that the majority of the energy comes out in the infrared. But that's not the original source. The original source we'll see a lot of in terms of X-ray, UV, and visible light. But because there's so much dust and gas inside, and especially the dust in the, in the galaxy around the center, there's a lot of dust lanes there, all that high energy radiation is absorbed by the dust lanes and then re-radiated at the infrared. So the amount of energy is still there, but it's from a different type of energy than we would expect. Now, of course, not all of it is absorbed. Some of it does get out, and we're able to measure the UV, the X-ray, and the visible light coming from that central region, but much of it is absorbed, and the vast majority of it is turned into infrared because before it's radiated out to the rest of the, of the galaxy and outside the galaxy where we can measure it. So that's the peculiarity of these C-free galaxies. They're not as intense as some of the higher intensity, uh, what we call... Um, uh, active galaxies, but they do look very different, especially when we start looking at the very center where something mysterious is going on with that black hole. Typically what happens is material is falling into a black hole, is being, uh, as it falls in, it's heated to very high temperatures at very high velocities, a lot of electromagnetic radiation being produced by the movement of all that charged material, and also of the high heat intensity being generated, and all that activity causes an enormous amount of radiation to be emitted from that central region. So that's essentially the source of this extremely unusual amount of radiation from that small region. Of course, that small region typically contains that very massive black hole, and that is what makes it so special when it comes to Seaford galaxies.